Hello, and welcome to this episode of What Does This Package Do? I'm your host, Nafil, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Editor Tools package. To start off, we're going to start playing with the count function. Now, the count function asks for a start and an interval and gives you an infinite generator that just keeps generating numbers. If you don't give it any parameters, it's going to start at zero and have an interval of one. Because it's an iterator, we can keep using next on it to see what numbers we get. Because we haven't changed any of the initial parameters, we are going to continue getting increments of one. However, if we were to change that increment value, we would get a different series of numbers. So in this example here, we have 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and then 2. Okay, so when you're working with iterators, you sometimes want just a slice of them, like you usually have in a list. So that's when the iSlice function comes in handy. This allows you to get a particular subset of elements from an iterator, and here we can see them printed out. Now, we can change the parameters. Everything doesn't have to start at zero. We can start at five, end at 10, or we can start at 15 and end at uh, 120 or something. And as you can see, we get 59.5 as the last element uh, of the things that we printed out. So you can play around with that, but you have to remember to be careful when you're dealing with iterators, and we're going to show that right now. So if we create a list of v, we are going to see that it's going to go on forever because count does not have an end. It's an infinite iterator. So we're going to stop that. But what if you wanted a subset of an infinite iterator? Well, we can go back to our old friend uh, iSlice over here, and we can say, hey, we just want a particular subset. So we're going to start from zero and end at 10. And that gives us a list of numbers. However, if we were to duplicate that and run it, we see that the iterator has moved forward. And if we were to duplicate that again, we will see that the iterator has been moved even further. So you have to be careful about how you use your iterators. So iterators moving forward isn't the only thing that you have to worry about. You also have to worry about iterators being used up. So in this particular case, let's say v isn't count, but rather v is an i slice of count. And we are going to take a slice of 0 to 10, and let's see what happens when we print that. It works fine. Now let's duplicate that. Okay, now we have nothing. It's an empty list because we've exhausted the iterator. Now we can always check by debugging that particular line in PyCharm. And in this case, we're going to evaluate a particular expression here. So we're going to go up to the calculator. And we're going to try doing a next on v and see what happens. And we get a stop iteration exception. Always remember, if an iterator is spent, then you're going to get a stop iteration exception. Now, luckily, iterTools comes with a convenient function that allows you to replicate an iterator. And that function is called t. And we're just going to import that from iter tools, and we're going to run the same code, but this time we're going to have two variables, iter1 and iter2. And depending on the second parameter of t, you would get that number of iterators returned as a tuple. So let's go ahead and print out a list of both iter1 and iter2 and see what happens. And here we go. We get two identical lists because we started with two different iterators. Okay, so what about finite iterators? Let's just get rid of all this code and let me show you if you just want an iterator with a lot of repeats, you just use repeat from iter tools and say you want a bunch of tens and you just want four of them. So here we have 10 and four, for repeat. And if we run that, we don't get anything because I haven't printed anything, but this time I'm going to print it and we see just an iterator. If we want to see what's inside that iterator, we're going to have to turn it into a list. Since we're dealing with all these iterators, it's a really good idea to know how to figure out if something is an iterator or not. So from the typing module, I'm going to import iterator. And from iter tools, I'm going to import repeat. So let's just get a finite iterator from repeat and call it tens and check to see if that is an iterator. And it is. But if you have a list, of whether it be numbers or 
letters, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is, those things are not iterators. They are iterables, and they are fundamentally different. So if we check here to see if abc.split is an iterator, it's not. Now, if we check with a list of numbers, that will also not be an iterator. The next item on our list is a function called accumulate. Now, what accumulate does is it takes an iterable and it adds up all the different elements in that iterable up until that certain point. So here in this case, we have A, A, B, A, B, C, D, and that is an accumulation of all the elements in that list. And of course, if you don't turn it into a list, you get an iterator. Now, if that example wasn't clear enough, let's try with a bunch of numbers. So in this case, we're going to do the same thing, but instead we're going to use repeat instead. And yes, you can also provide it with another iterator. So in this case, we're gonna have uh, four tens and we're gonna try and print that. And of course, we're going to get an iterator. And if we turn that into a list, we're actually going to see some actual values. In this case, we get 10, 20, 30, and 40. Okay, so heading back to another infinite iterator here, let's take a look at cycle. And what cycle does is if you give it a list or an iterable, it's going to cycle over all the elements of that list or iterable over and over and over again. The way to demonstrate this is to take an i slice of cycle. In this case, we're going to go ahead and take 0 to 10, which is going to give us 10 elements, which is far more than the number of elements in our current list. Of course, I slice is going to return an iterator, so we have to turn that into a list as well. And once we run it, we'll see that the list is being repeated, or rather, the elements are being repeated. If we take 15 elements, then you see the repeats happening again and again. The next item on our list is a cute little function called chain. And in most cases, chain is used to flatten lists, but it can be used to append or prepend iterators. In this case, we're just going to join two lists together using chain. And here, we're just going to use list of tens twice. We're going to put the chain function on top of it and import that. And once we run it, we see that we get an iterator. So we have to turn that into a list. And once we do that, we see a flat list of elements. Now, chain works in two ways. Firstly, it just takes a bunch of iterables as arguments, but it can also take a single iterable. And if you change the method to dot from iterable, it will take in a single iterable. And you can see that gives us a flat list, just like before. Now, the next function on our list is something called zip longest. The normal zip is only going to go up to the last element in the shortest list. What that means in this case is that the last items that are going to be printed out is the last item in the second list and the second last item in the first list. But if we were to use something like zip longest, what would happen is we would see which of the lists are longer. And I'll show you how. You see that you get a none for the second list in iteration. Now you can put in a fill value, and in this case, we're just going to put a dash as the fill value. And when we print that out, we're going to see 100 dash instead of none. So that's enough of playing with fake data. Let's get some real data from a web scale database. So don't mind me, I'm just going to quickly create a query here to get a few order or sales items in a very large list, which has a couple of dictionaries in it. I'm just going to copy all of this information and just paste it in the Python file. Just one thing of note here, we are getting 10 different sales or order items and not five. Don't worry about bad size. If you're following along, please check the description below for a link to the gist. Now, the thing that we're going to be looking at is something called group by. Now, what group by does is it takes an iterable, in this case a list, and segments them based on a particular key. Now, the key is a function that it uses to determine what falls into what category. In this case, we are going to categorize or group the list according to customer satisfaction. Now, I have to put a little disclaimer here. Group by in this case, works a little differently from SQL's group by function. It groups things that are the same according to the key function, but are also consecutive. So what I'm going to do is just put all the groups into a dictionary, and I'm going to use a default dict with list so that I can take a look at all the different orders. If you're not familiar with what default dict does, take a look at my previous episode. That should give you a primer. I'm just going to rename iter real quick because iter is an actual function. 
So for all the sales in a particular group, what we're going to do is use the satisfaction number as a key, and we are going to append to the list that sale for that key. I've just made a small mistake here. It should be group, not sale. That is the key. Okay, so let's see what happens when we print out groups. All right, that seems like a uh, lot of random text. So let me just go back in there and pretty print it so that we can see if the satisfaction is correctly being mapped to the right sales. I'm just going to import that and run it again. Okay, that seems to look better. And it seems that we have the correct mapping from satisfaction to the sales. Now, some of the people watching this is going to be thinking, hey, why don't you just use default dict for everything here? And in fact, you can. But the reason I'm doing this is to show you what group by does and also what group by doesn't do. Because very commonly, people just think that it is the same function that you get in SQL, and it is not. Now, with that out of the way, let's just print out how many sales are in a corresponding satisfaction group. Okay, so the numbers look correct there, but it would be better if the groups were sorted, so we're just going to sort that real quick. Now, Iter Tools has a lot of great nifty functions in it, but there is a package called More Iter Tools that builds on top of the functionality that Iter Tools has. So we're just going to quickly install that and take a look at group by transform. But before I do that, let me just clear up some confusion with sales because it overlaps with another variable name. It does not affect the way the program is run because of how Python handles scope, but still, it's annoying. Now, group by transform differs in one main way, which is that it asks for a transformation function as well. And what that does is it transforms each item in the group using the function you give it. So in this case, what's going to happen is for each sale, we're just going to get its items. What this means is that we're going to have to rename sales to items and sale to item. Now that we've done that, let's just head over and run this program. And that doesn't look right because the numbers that we're getting for each satisfaction group seems to correspond to the number of sales, not the number of items. So what we're gonna do now is just take a look at what's inside the satisfaction groups. That should give us an indication as to why the number of items is so low. We can just go ahead and run that, but that doesn't look too helpful, so I'm going to use pretty print on it. And if I take a look closely, it seems that the Items are put in a list of lists, and that needs to change. But before we do anything with that, let's just extract this as a variable. And once we do that, we are going to take the length of the variable in question, just to make sure that everything is all right. Everything seems okay. We're still getting the wrong numbers, but the items seem to be there. So we're just going to go ahead and flatten the satisfaction groups, and we're going to do that using the flatten function from more iter tools. But that returns an iterator, so we're going to use ilen instead of len, which is also from more iter tools. And of course, flatten is going to return an iterator, so we're going to have to turn that into a list. But what do you see here? there are empty lists. And that is because ilen forwards the iterator. And so we have to revert back to using group satisfaction to get the lists in question. But that still should give us the right number of items in the group. So you've taken a look at all these iterators, but what if you wanted to use them with async code? Well, there are two libraries. One is AIO Stream, which is the more mature of the two that gives you some of that functionality, and AIO Iter Tools. Try them both out to see what you like. And with that, it's a wrap. Thank you very much for watching. 
and please subscribe to this YouTube channel for more Python and PyCharm videos.